Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. Hello, welcome to Illinois Stories. I'm Mark McDonald in Quincy on Quincippi Island in front of the latest addition to the Friends of the Log Cabins Village. And you're looking at the Clatt Adams Cabin. And I say the latest because it got to this stage of completion just this morning. And in a few minutes, we'll be talking to the man who put this cabin back together for the Friends of the Log Cabins. But first, John Gephardt, this has got to be exciting for you because you and your group have been down here for about eight years trying to save this village. And now you've got your latest addition, the Clad Adams Cabin. That's cool, that, you're, you're building, that's yeah, great. Th this is the first major achievement I feel that we've done for the village because uh, that we've been told the best thing to do with these cabins to save them is to uh, rebuild them from the ground up and put them up higher uh -huh. on, on foundations. And that's what we did with this cabin. And so this is our first cabin that we've actually done the way it should be done. Yeah. Most people who live in Quincy or visit Quincy are familiar with the name Clad Adams because the Clad Adams Park is one of the prettiest riverside parks anywhere in the country. Right. And that's right in, right in Quincy on the riverfront. And this is named after Clad Adams, so they're kind of familiar with that name. We're going to learn more about him later in the program. Right. But that's the same Clad Adams, right? Right. It is. It is. And this, these logs were in storage for some period of time. Yeah. We, we had to take the cabin down in 2012 and uh, the park district said it was unsafe and, and so we basically numbered every log mm -hmm. with jar caps according to the way uh, our consultant Joe Gallagher told us to do it. Mm -hmm. We numbered them, took them apart, put preservative on them and put them in the old Skyride building which is on the other end of the island mm -hmm. and covered them up until now when we brought them back and basically uh, put them back together. Yeah. And we got some help like from Comcast uh, they came in and the Big Brother Big Sister program and they came in and helped us bring the logs back. So we've gotten help from a lot of different volunteer yeah. groups. Well, you mentioned Joe Gallagher. I want to meet this guy. He's the guy to put this to put this puzzle back together for you. Right. So I want to meet him. We're going to talk to him next. Right. Okay. Joe Gallagher, you have a rather unusual skill. There aren't a lot of people that travel around the country reassembling log cabins. Dog on it, when you have a log cabin village, you gotta have somebody that knows how to do that, don't you? Yeah, and you know, I don't do this commercially. I do this to help nonprofits and historical societies, folks like that. Um, there are some other people that build log cabins and you know, they're big time guys, mm -hmm. but we do little things to help people hang on to the stories that are actually there rather than you know, try to build a McMansion any place. So we're looking for small places that have great stories that have a lot of integrity. Mm -hmm. This Clatt Adams cabin was in, well, as you can see, you can see which logs are old and what you had to do new here. But when you first encountered this building, I say building, it was just a bunch of logs. It was just in a heap, right? <laughs> well, no, actually it was standing when I came here in 2011, but it was leaning oh, and it was dangerous okay. mm -hmm. and it had a lot of bracing on it. Mm -hmm. So you could look at it, you could count the logs, you could examine the logs, you couldn't get into the building, the roof wanted to jump off the building. Mm -hmm. So um, in conversations with the friends, they agreed that they would take the building down. I think it was in storage for two years. Mm -hmm. uh, I came back and took a look at it and tried to make an assessment of it in that kind of situation. But when I got here, it was sitting over to the building to my right mm -hmm. in piles, and we took it all apart, took another look at the logs, and decided what it was that we would keep, what we would replace, and we used up most of the logs they gave us. Yeah, yeah. Now, as we look at this, as it's sitting here, when you got here to reassemble it, the friends had, they had put this, they, they had raised up the level, so it's above flood level, right? They had poured the piers for you, right? and they put down that base of good, solid wood, right? Yes. So you, then you work, You had a foundation to work from. I did. Yeah. Um, they built this because the Parks Department and I think the Corps of Engineers had some specs for what height this had mm -hmm. to be set at to get out of the 100-year floodplain. So they said they would do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a trade-off between how much did they want to spend on me and how much did they want to do themselves. And so, plus they had to comply with what the city uh, or the uh, Parks Department wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. To get a good cabin, we needed a good foundation. Yeah, 
And then as we look at this, as all the things, that, all the logs that look old, they, they indeed are old, and you had to figure out how they go together. Did you number them, or were they numbered, or how well, did that work? you can work? see little shadows on there, and they took mason jars, lids, and numbered them, uh -huh. and when they disassembled it. So when we got the building back, those jar lids were still there. That's how I knew what went where, uh -huh. but it still took some figuring to make sure that the sides with nine logs made it up well with the side with eight logs. Oh, so you have one side that has fewer logs than the other? Yeah. Oh my goodness. But, but it's still almost level. I mean, you got it almost level, huh? Well, yeah, we had to make some adjustments. <laughs> You know, some of the Amazing. notches got special, uh -huh. and uh, uh -huh. some well, of the framing got special. Well, and I can see where you took some some uh, some some shims, and you know, you you use those, and of course, those will be all. I'm not. Is it called chinking? But those will all be mortared over, I guess. So yeah, you won't even the, see those. The, the chinking is the wooden stuff. The daubing is the mortar. The daubing, okay. And so those will get replaced. And all the logs that have a nick in them, those are new logs that we added. Some of the logs that look brighter and lighter colored. Mm -hmm. Those are new logs that we put in the uh -huh. building. There are still some logs in the building that have hollow pockets, but it's mostly good wood, and as long mm -hmm. as the friends keep them clean, treat it yeah. with some borate, everything will be great. Can, can we go inside? Yeah, sure. Well, let's walk inside yeah. and see. take a look. Okay, so you've got this, and, and you've got a ton of gravel in here, so this is going to be good. It'll be able to, it'll be able to drain and everything. That's the idea. You, you put some flooring in. It, it, did well, you the determine? Well, friends put the flooring in. They did, okay. Yeah. And they, that was flooring they had from when it was here originally, I guess. The nope. flooring was, no? This is, this is one of the uh, volunteers sawed trees on his property to put this flooring in. Oh, okay. And so there's a stack outside with So more they're going to continue here. to put they'll put the flooring in. They'll get in the flooring all, okay. in, yeah. Okay. You had to frame up the windows. Were there windows in here originally and there, you just found the... There were the... four holes. Uh -huh. uh, they had frames, but those were long gone when I got here. Mm -hmm. And two doors. Um, so we just framed those in and we added these corners just for structural integrity. You know, while the logs are okay, mm -hmm. I wanted to have a building that was bulletproof. So we have a bulletproof building. Mm -hmm. And then if we go up, I, I can see, you know, you've got the beginnings of a roof here, but uh, I guess the friends are going to complete that? They wanted to complete that. Uh -huh. and what we did was give them uh, a modern roof that they will then, if I can use this word, rusticate. Mm -hmm. And so they'll put shakes on it, but they'll put a a solid deck up there so that won't leak and then we put on hurricane ties and rafter hangers and collar ties mm -hmm. um, to give them a roof that would be that would stand up to any inspection what what kind of wood was the original cabin made of this is oak and mm -hmm. the original cabin was oak is oak and, and the replacement wood you found was also oak huh put back oak <clears> as well <throat> yeah yeah and uh, we we use some special uh, timber screws to run long screws through here. So you'll see some cabins have big rods that run through the building, but we hid 16 inch screws in the corners and in different places mm -hmm. in the building to tie it all together. Mm -hmm. Now you can't do all this yourself, right? You've no, got some, who, who, no. <laughs> what, what is a crew? How big is a crew to work on a project like well, that? Well, it's, do you remember when you were a kid and you played pickup baseball? Sure. I choose you and yeah. someone else gets somebody else <laughs> and I choose them. And that's how you put together a crew. I've got, you know, a dozen guys and gals that I can call on and say, are you available for this project? And they'll say, no. Or they'll say, well, yeah, what is it? Mm -hmm. And so we'll agree and I'll hire them and they'll come and work for me. They all have a good skill set. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like I work with too many trainees, yeah. but I can. Yeah. And um, so that's Do you have any specialized equipment that it takes? I mean, do you have a crane or anything like that to help you hoist this stuff up in the air? Or? Uh, the friends had a crane mm -hmm. and it was a interesting device. I think you might have a picture of it somewhere. You'll see it. Okay. Um, and we were able to put most of these logs on the buildings with just the four guys. But you get up above eight feet and it gets awful sketchy. Mm -hmm. So we had, um, in here we had scaffolding and we would stand on the scaffolding and the crane would bring the log over and set it down for us. We try to notch them before we put them up just to make sure we didn't have to monkey with them, you know, six yeah. or seven or eight, ten feet in the air. And then when we put the big ridge beam in, the crane came in. That's uh -huh. a 30-foot, uh, two by ten doubled 
beam. So, yeah, we had a crane. Yeah. But I use um, power tools, hand tools. Mm -hmm. I have a log moving device that looks like nothing you've ever seen, but it's called the blue ox. <laughs> and a person can pick up a 26 foot long log by themselves and roll it around without any trouble. No kidding. Just if you, it's just, you know, wheels on a fulcrum mm -hmm. and you can just kind of drag mm -hmm. around. We do, we use those a lot just yeah. to move things. Yeah. So, um, the equipment's not highly specialized, but you have to use the right equipment yeah. in order to get the job done right. Yeah, yeah. Um, are, are, do you have any, are there any log cabins waiting for you to assemble? Or do you, do you have a, a, a list of work lined up yet? <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the phone rings regularly, and and it's they some of them are you know serious people, mm -hmm. and some of them you know I said well I can come and look at it but I know you're 500 miles away <laughs> you have to pay my mileage oh I can't do that <laughs> goodbye you're uh, you're uh, in Idaho right yeah so people call you from all over the country pretty yeah. much <laughs> yeah so um, you know but if they're willing to cover my expenses. Mm -hmm. I'll go out and look at it, but I, I'm, I'm not chasing business. I don't advertise. Yeah. There, but there are a lot of these log cabins in storage all over the country, aren't there? People have seen yeah, them. Yeah, and they, they deteriorate when they get in those circumstances. You know, they're mm -hmm. not preserved well. Bugs get them. Yeah. You know, termites eat them up pretty easily. Yeah. So, yeah, there are buildings out there. And this one, you know, the friends will stay after it, and they'll clean it, and they'll apply mm -hmm. borates to it and um, blow out the dirt with compressed air. That will make a big difference on this building. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, well, listen. Thanks for being in Quincy and for doing this work. I think you, one nice thing about the work you do is you know that after you're gone, your work is still going to be around. You know, this is going to be here for a good long time, isn't it? Yeah, I, I don't think about this as a monument to anything except the persistence of these friends. Yeah. You know, yeah. these are a good bunch of folks who, you know, I have a good time working with them. They're nice to be around. They're pleasant people. We share the same values. What could you ask for besides yeah. that? Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Nice to meet you. Take care. You too. John, this, this name Clat Adams fascinates me, you know, because because of the big park down on the on the riverfront, you know, everybody's familiar with. And this is dedicated or donated to the friends in the name of Clad Adams. But we don't really know whether Clad Adams had anything to do with this cabin or not, right? Right. Uh, uh, the Michael family donated the cabin and we don't even know where the cabin come from. Uh, we'd love to find out so we'd know the history yeah. of the cabin. Uh, it was most likely that his parents lived in a log cabin when they first moved to Quincy because most people who came to Quincy in the 1800s mm -hmm. lived in log cabins till they could afford to build That a was more their starter house. home, right? Yeah. A log cabin. They weren't meant to be, te they were meant to be temporary. Mm -hmm. They were mm -hmm. never meant to last yeah. as long as they've lasted. Right. But as long as it is do donated in, in honor of Clad Adams, let's talk a little bit about him because people are familiar with the name, but I didn't know anything about him. What, uh, what is, was his role in early Quincy? Anyway? Uh, in early Quincy, uh, his father started a, 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 a general store with supplies and things for people coming up the river, etc., mm -hmm. and people who lived in the area. And it, it carried on that his brother and then he took over the store and basically ran that store and had riverboat people coming in to buy supplies and uh, they used to call it the boat store for some reason. They must have kept a lot of boating supplies. In. I see. Okay. And it was down real close to where the park is. It was on, on Front Street, right? Right. Right, okay. right across from the Clad Adams Park. Yeah. Okay. And so he must have made money in that store because then he, he actually became a boat a boatman himself, didn't he? Right. Yeah. He actually ran ferries from Quincy over to West Quincy and so because we didn't have the bridges back then. So the only way yeah. you got across the Mississippi River was by uh, ferry boats. Yeah. And so he had several ferry boats that he actually captained going back and forth. And I imagine that was pretty lucrative because Quincy was growing at a pretty pretty good rate. There was a lot of traffic going across the river. Wasn't I would it? imagine so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, now behind you, I, the reason I wanted to shoot this part of this interview here is behind you is one of your cabins, and you were telling me we have so much work to do. We've shored up the roofs on most of these, and we have new, you know, new, new cedar shake shingles and everything. But here's a good example of what happens when you when a roof it, it gets gets uh. Well, roofs are never meant to last forever. Yeah. That yeah. roof's been on in there since the, the late '60s. So if you think about it, that roof lasted a long time, but it's had its time, and it needs to be replaced. And the best way to redo this cabin is to take it all the way down to the ground 
build the foundation up higher mm -hmm. and then put the cabin back together like we just did with the Clad Adams cabin. Oh, so this really? is our next cabin to do. And right now we're in the process, we'll be asking people to donate and raise money for it. Mm -hmm. So we have enough money that we can do that. So you won't be just putting a roof on this. Oh, no. You're going to reassemble this. Oh thing. no, we have to take it apart because oh, man. some of the logs are needing to be replaced. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look on the one wall, it's starting to bow out. And if we don't get to it fairly soon, the park district like the Clad Adams is going to mm -hmm. come to us and say, hey guys, you need to take it down. Mm -hmm. It's unsafe. Mm -hmm. Can I, we're in a public park. Mm -hmm. So you can't have something here that's unsafe. Yeah, yeah. So that's why we need to raise the funds as soon as we can so mm -hmm. we can get this one done. All the other cabins, we've done the maintenance work on them and they're structurally sound. And some of them we put temporary metal roofs on and others we actually put cedar shakes roofs on mm -hmm. because that's what they would have had here originally. Mm -hmm. uh, so we might be seeing Joe Gallagher again Perform either some him of or his magic uh, on this one yeah, when it's time. Either him huh? or some other company yeah. that does that kind of yeah. work. Yeah. Because we, as a park, you know, as a, uh, because we're in a park, we have to go out on competitive bid. Yeah. And in this case, Joe was the, the low bidder. So, yeah. one, one of your colleagues, Art, over here is getting ready to. He couldn't wait for the, for uh, Joe to finish his work on his cam because he wants to get to to filling up those those right. slots with mortar. So we're going to go chat with him a little bit. Okay. Okay. Art, now you got your work cut out for you, don't you? Well, you got we the can, do. you got the logs in place, <laughs> but there's a lot of gaps in those logs, aren't there? You got a lot of work to do. A lot of voids, and we will fill that with chinking. Chinking means to fill a void, fill a hole. Mm -hmm. And to do that, these are pretty wide. A lot of log cabins you see won't have any more than two inches to fill like this. Mm -hmm. Well, these were old logs, and, and we had to use what we yeah. have. And you can see this big gap. This yeah. is the gap you're talking about right here. But what you've done is you've already done a little work for us because what, what you've cut some of your mesh that you're going to use, Correct. and and that'll hold your chinking in place huh? Exactly. when you put your first layer on. That's it. Now, again, in 1850, they didn't have that. Right. So they just put twigs and things in it to hold it there and maybe yeah. use clay. But this is a good look at what you use. And I don't see how you could get more efficient than that. It's almost like a honeycomb, oh, yeah. you know, it'll it, just... It holds it real well. Yeah. So we just push it in like so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you nail, you nail, uh, we nail it in we'll so put it, nail. it might be all right not to, but yeah. this, hey, let's do it. Well, we got it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. why not? Uh, and then you've got, I know you've got some consistency. You already got some mortar mixed I, uh, up here for us. It's been sitting here. I'm going to put a little water in it. Yeah, I, I dried it out. I made, waited too long, didn't I? And made you dry it out. Uh, use the old arm power to, to mix it up mm -hmm. instead of a concrete mixer. Now, we have, that's another advantage we have today that they didn't have then. Oh, they just exactly they kind of right. had to use clay, didn't they? Yes, they did. Yeah, but you've got ready, ready mix or some kind of mortar mix now. And we will just get that to where we can put it on the hawk. I don't know how it got the name hawk. Uh-huh. But that way we can take it over and fill in the chink, the holes right in here. An easy way to do it is to push it over. And then I have another smaller trowel that I can use. I did have another smaller trowel. Well, maybe yes, it's in I the do. bucket, huh? I do. It's right here in the bucket. Okay. And once we get some mortar in there, we'll pack it into that, mm -hmm. that wire that we had. Mm -hmm. And we may not put any more than just that. And <laughs> just to just a repeat process. Yeah, because it, it has to, before you can put another layer on, that has to dry. So actually, you do have to wait, don't you, between. Oh, yeah. All I'm wanting to do right now is just get something in there to start it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now I got it too wet. Yeah, it's kind of falling but down but on you. Although oh, some of it's sticking. You, yeah, can see it's sticking. you can see how that works now. Yeah. And that's about all we'll do for this first layer. Uh -huh. Maybe just keep that on and come up and bring it up to the top. Right. And it'll just be maybe two or three processes to get the out and then we'll smooth it down and curl it, make it look good. Yeah. And then, and then after that all sets up, then, then you go back around and then you do the, what's called daubing, huh? where you actually finish it off. Right. Now I mentioned uh, taking a, a brush. 
a stiff brush. What? And watch how that will. Make, oh, it makes make little grooves in there. It sure does. Yeah. Now, whenever that dries, the the other layer will stick to that. We may put two or three oh, layers in there. Okay. So if you had a smooth surface, it's less likely to stick to it. Correct. Right? Okay. Correct. All right. And will will your dobbing material be very similar it's to the same same, thing. same stuff? I don't know why they call it dobbing, mm -hmm. but taking the dobbing. Mm -hmm. uh, same material. Dobbing okay. kind of like the finish coat. Yeah. And the chinking is your field yeah. coat. You, you've done this process on some of the other buildings, haven't you? Well, what we did, and you can see that it's not too professional looking. What, are we looking we, over there? <laughs> yeah. We have volunteers. I think it looks pretty darn good. Youngsters. And you also see there, feel like that, you see a rock sticking out? Yep. You can put rocks in here. Mm -hmm. Anything. Anything just, that'll stay, just, just uh, help you fill those gaps. Huh? This weighs a lot of weight in this concrete. Yeah. So. We will probably, in these wider holes, put yeah. a little little board, a little log in here. Yeah, fill. and you can see where they've done that. And I mean, down here, you know, they're, they're putting any just about anything you yeah, can. Yeah, we'll just there. leave that right in there. Yep. And yep. Uh, so that... Uh, Doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to keep the air out, right? Water and rain. Yeah. rain. Yep. Betty, right in between the, the, the old cabin and the Clat Adams cabin, mm -hmm. You have an herb garden. We certainly do. And I'm, it's, it's, mid, it's almost middle May now, but things are growing up pretty good, aren't oh, they? Oh, yes, they are. And this was a necessity back in those days. It, it was. And you had to grow things that could come in early because the winter, boy, it's been a long winter and you're hungry you and you bet. need to do some cooking, Absolutely. Right? But the, before you do that, you got to make sure that you can protect your herbs from the critters. This, and this is a very special fence. This isn't it? was called a wattle fence. It uh, was built here by volunteers to keep the critters away from mm -hmm. our herb garden. Well, you know, I don't know what could get through that the way it is so tight. It is very tight. They did a fine job. Yeah. And what I think what you would do is if you were an old time settler, what you do is you'd go out in the woods and you wanted to cut, you wanted uh -huh. to thin all this stuff anyway. Absolutely. So you cut it all out and, and all this like one inch and two inch stuff, mm -hmm. haul it back to, to near the house. That's true. And put it around your garden and just kind of wind it around and, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it would take a pretty a pretty small rabbit to get through that, I'll it tell you. It would. This is held up very well. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now our herbs, uh, out here we have the tansy, which oh, is an right insect repel uh, repellent. Okay. They sprinkled that on the floor of the cabin to keep insects out. No kidding. Oh, yes, yes. Well, uh -huh. I'll tell you, the critters must not like it because you planted it outside the fence, so the critters must not like it either. That's right, that's right. You got uh -huh. some early onions coming oh, on Oh, yes, here. absolutely. And, of course, they were used for flavoring soups and uh, meats and chickens. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah, the wild onions or winter onions, mm -hmm. as they were called then. And you, I can't believe this, but you're actually trying to grow. I'm going to ask you to step oh, toward yes. me. Toward me. You're actually trying to grow dandelions. Look at oh, this big yes. old guy down here. I know. Uh -huh. And you got yes. a bunch of them. They use dandelions for salad, for tea. Uh, yeah, mostly that. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. So salad the, and tea. They make wine out of them too. Oh yes, I, I've never yes, had they it, did. But they say yes, it's really good. Yes, they did make wine Mint out of that too. It grows like crazy, and I'll tell you what. Mm hmm. It, it's it's really good and strong right yes, now. Yes, uh huh. It and, smells uh, very nice. If you let this, this will take over your whole garden mm -hmm. if you let it. But it, it will. It mm -hmm. was probably really good to have then because they didn't have flavored drinks. No, you know? and a lot of times they made tea out of the mint yeah. and uh, a lot of these other mm -hmm. uh, herbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you've got some. Uh, let's walk this way just a Alrighty. little bit. Alrighty. I saw a big old bumblebee on these chives just a little bit ago. Uh -huh. They must really like them, but but those are flavor. That's flavor for yes, flavor too. Yes, yes, it, it is. Uh huh. And the dill there, uh, of course, is for seasoning. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, let's see. I don't, I don't know, know if that's what oregano that... or not. I'm not sure what that is. No, over there. I'm not sure either. If but it we, is, we heard a little bit about sage, and right behind you, I think, mm -hmm. I think we have some sage here, don't we? We have some sage. Yeah. Oh sage. yes, yes. There we have sage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, it was for seasoning, and I think insect repellent also. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll remember that because mm -hmm. it's getting to be mosquito time, and I'll tell you what. Oh yes. I uh, I, I don't look forward to that time. Of year. No, no, not yeah. at all, <laughs> not at all. So. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> the friends have their work cut out for them. They have a self-imposed deadline to get this cabin finished for Frontier Settlement Days in September, when the mayor will dedicate it in honor of the 175th anniversary of Quincy's founding. With another Illinois Story in Quincy, I'm Mark McDonald. Thanks for watching.
Illinois Stories is brought to you by the Corporation for Public Broadcasting and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you. For a DVD copy of the program you've just seen, send 1995 to Network Knowledge, P.O. Box 6248, Springfield, Illinois 62708. Be sure to include the program name, subject, and when the program aired. You can also order with your credit card by calling 800-232-3605.